He was my best friend, my brother, and the absolute epitome of a police officer. And for all he gave to everyone that he knew and didn't know. As chief, this is probably my worst nightmare to lose one of my members. It's tragic. We just lost two officers within seven weeks, you know. And they're putting their life on the line every single day for us. Ritter, thank you for being my friend. And thank you for being that kind of friend I knew I could count on no matter what. Hello again, Northeast Ohio, and welcome in to 3 News at 5. Thanks so much for spending time with us. Great to be with you again. Happy Monday, Christy, to you and to everyone watching at home. Jay Crawford, of course, here. I'm Christy Paul. We are so grateful for your company. Tonight, we want to tell you about him. He's described as fearless and a hero. Those are words from the people who knew him. Characterizing Cleveland police officer Jameson Ritter. He was shot and killed in the early hours of July 4th on East 80th Street in Cleveland's Huff neighborhood while responding to a call. He was just 27 years old. And under a large American flag, look at this procession for Officer Ritter passing through 12th and Superior there. It began at Chambers Funeral Home just before 9.30 this morning. The final destination, Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist. Cleveland police and the community look at them just lining the streets in support of Officer Ritter's family. We have team coverage for you tonight from multiple angles. Lindsay Buckingham live from the 3rd District where Officer Ritter was stationed. Matt Rascone was at the procession. He talked to those whose family members put their lives on the line each and every day. And we begin with our Annabelle Childers. She is live from the cathedral where the service was held. Annabelle set the scene for us as a very difficult day was getting underway. It was. It was a very somber morning. We watched law enforcement officers park their cars. They got out of their vehicles very quietly, very respectfully, some of them hugging before walking into these cathedral doors. Through the tears, grieving, and stories shared, one thing is clear. Officer Jameson Ritter was deeply loved, and he will be deeply missed. His compassion for those in need and his relentless pursuit of justice were evident in every action he took. This morning, a crowd of those closest to the fallen officer packed church pews, and close friends took the podium to share what Ritter meant to them. One of those speakers, Brittany Vajusi, Officer Ritter's patrol partner. And even though we came together by chance through a schedule shortage one day at work, we shared a bond that I have never come close to sharing with another person in my life, and I know I will certainly never share with anyone again. Vajusi and others shared of Ritter's unshakable character and contagious joy, and they emphasized the excellence and commitment he brought to the job every day. He was the person you want to see when the world was coming down around you. He was the person you wanted by your side, not just for his competence, but for his infectious spirit, his laugh, and his genuine camaraderie. Now, as the entire law enforcement community feels the weight of his death, his patrol partner asks that the memory of Officer Ritter never be forgotten. For all he gave to everyone that he knew and didn't know, the least we can ever do to give back to him is to remember and to share his legacy forever. The service this morning was a memorial service for Officer Ritter. His funeral will take place in upstate New York. That's where he was born and raised. That's where he grew up. All right, Annabelle Childers reporting live at St. John's Cathedral. Annabelle, thank you. Well, the memorial service was only part of the way Officer Ritter was remembered today. Matt Rascone continues our coverage now with more on the procession. And Matt, talk to us about the people who came out to pay their respects. I mean, the, um, the number of people that were on the streets waiting for this procession, just, it, it was overwhelming, I think, for a lot of us that were watching. Yeah, yeah, we were set up at the West Park Police and Fire Memorial and there were flags, there were ribbons. As you said, there were people set up for this procession, which unfortunately has been a familiar scene for some. And the message from many was police need this community behind them. It happened, can't change what happened, but how do we understand and what can you do to support these men and women of Cleveland's Blue Line going forward? 
Today, that support came in the form of decor, roadblocks, and some streets lined with people, many of them strangers, some with family working at police departments, including in Cleveland's 3rd District. What does it mean for them to see this kind of support? I really can't speak for them, but I think they are grateful for it. Just wish that they could have it all the time, not just some of the time when something like this happens. Silence fell as the hearse for Officer Jamison Ritter passed by the West Park Police and Fire Memorial, a constant reminder and show of support for those who have been killed in the line of duty, including the last Cleveland officer, Shane Bartek, killed in 2021. What was it like when the hearse, the procession actually passed? Emotional. It was sad. He's so young, too. Just like Officer Durbin, you know, and Shane. I knew Shane Bartek, you know. Yeah, so it's just sad. We're losing too many. The same procession paused in front of the 3rd District Police Station, where Officer Ritter served the community, and where that same community is now remembering his sacrifice. Families of police officers hope that support lasts. Somebody's working out there to protect you and serve you. So sometimes the littlest things can have the biggest impact. That right there is Rick Deschant, and he's with the Northeast Ohio Foundation for Patriotism. He has a son who's, a, who's an officer, and he said that support throughout the year for police can look as simple as a wave or a thank you to a police officer. Christine. Yeah, so Matt, you know, for those of us watching uh, on television, it's different. You were out there. I know that you spoke to some people, and you were there that moment that the hearse drove by. Uh, talk to us about what that was like for you and what people told you. Yeah, it was a, it was a really compelling moment. I mean, it's just you, you see people lined up and it's, you know, it kind of from afar, you could think, oh, it looks sort of like a parade route. But when this passes, it's just silent. It's just silent. And across the street from us was that memorial where we have other officers names who are listed on that memorial who, who died. Uh, the group of motorcyclists, when they pass by, one thing I noticed, because I'm just staring at them while they're driving by quickly, but you can see their patches and you realize on their shoulders that so many of them are from different departments, just from across Northeast Ohio. So that was really cool to see. Uh, you really got, to, got a, a, an idea of how many people this impacts and how many people are coming out to support not just community members, but law enforcement agencies from across the area. Yeah, I think um, I, I know officers and regardless of what your uh, your area is that you cover, there is a family uh, feeling amongst all of them. No doubt about yeah. it. All right, Matt, thank you so much. Yep. As community members line the streets to pay their respects to Cleveland police officer Jamison Ritter, our Lindsay Buckingham was in West Park today as his procession went by. She shares why some say they were called to be there. They showed up early to line the streets from Chambers Funeral Home on Rocky River Drive all the way to Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist on Superior. A mix of young and old and brothers and sisters in blue, standing together to honor a hero. Cleveland police officer Jamison Ritter, Kevin Johnson and Eric Dodson came to the intersection of Rocky River Drive and Lorraine Avenue today. I think just supporting the community as much as we can. Fallen officers, we've seen that too much in the last month. The two are members of a law enforcement motorcycle club. Their mission, to show support for safety force workers. It's hard on a Monday, a lot of guys work, but we try to come out and show all the police officers, any firemen, EMS, everything, that deserve it. And I mean, he definitely did. He went down the line of duty. A hero, they say, who deserves honor and respect. Something Eric and Kevin want to see more of for police officers. Definitely more support for them, but I know everybody, it's, it's a weird time, and that's where it gets hard, and that's why I'm glad to see the people that come out and do this, you know, people like even yourself. It shows the community cares. And you're getting a live look right now at Officer Ritter's police vehicle, confirmed by Freddie Diaz, Sergeant Freddie Diaz with the Cleveland Police just a little while ago. They have it parked outside the 3rd District. That is where, of course, Officer Ritter was stationed. Jay, I have to tell you, the memorial outside is incredible. There are signs of love. There are dozens of flowers, balloons, flags. It's really powerful, and I know that it will continue to grow as the week progresses. 
All right, Lindsay Buckingham live at the 3rd District. Lindsay, thank you very much. And we can imagine what that means to his family and, and for all of the families within the police departments there. You can watch the full memorial, by the way, for Officer Ritter on our website. You can also stay up to date on the latest in the case. We have everything there for you at WKYC.com.